Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. This is a video follows up on my first video on tips for uh, making more robust surface models. In this follow-up, I'm going to look at something I call scaffolding or hybrid modelling. So scaffolding off a solid body, because sometimes taking a hybrid approach, depending on the form, actually makes more sense and makes it much easier to control your surfaces, uh, like the envelope uh, of the product like the over, overall bounding volume of the product and um, can make things more robust. So I've got a few examples here. I'm going to uh, roll back and just show you, actually I'm not going to roll back, sorry, I lie, I'm going to delete these features here and show you what we started with here. Okay, so basically this is my scaffold. I have uh, two extrusions and they're controlled from this plan control here so in there there's just some dimensions so i what i'm want to do basically as you saw in the um in the model before i deleted the other features was i want to create a, a surface that sort of runs down and then tangentially into this rectangular face here so to do that i have created a split line here which is a sketch on that top of the rectangle and it's a couple of style splines which are constrained so they're tangent here in the middle uh, and also touch the end of the rectangle tangentially so i've set it up this way because if we turn instant 3d on and go to the plan control i want to be able to drag around that feature there and have everything update so as you can see that's going boing boing making a scotched egg that's why i've set it up that way so what i want to do is create a boundary surface between this edge and these edges here so to do so i'm going to add some sections so i've got one section left in there so i'll just edit that and show you what it is it is a degree two style spline so that means it's got three cvs on this end here it's constrained uh, to that point on the where the uh, oval touches the end of the rectangle and I've got a horizontal and then this ends free but I've got equal length constraints on the control polygon so it's 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 approximating an arc so I'm going to add another one at this other end here so sketch on the right plane style spline go one two three points and get this end point here we can make that a pierce point and this end point here and coincident and pick the two control polygon segments make them equal and this one here can make horizontal okay and that's that section completed now i want to add some sections in the other direction as well because i'm not moving the circle from side to side this way um, i'm going to make one section here and mirror it across so to do that we need to set up a plane so at the moment, if I put it on the front plane and move the circle, this section will not move with it. So I need to create a plane on this line here. I'll just turn instant 3D off. So S for your shortcuts, for your geometry and stuff like that, fillets. Um, plane. So we've picked that, that line and then perpendicular to the top plane. And go OK and then just resize it so that plane if i change the dimension here where the circle is located so make that 80 and rebuild that plane moves with it okay so we want to put our sketch on plane two here so what i'm doing is i'm i'm referencing the solid geometry to build the surface so i'm referencing the edges of the solid geometry so again one two three and pierce and on this end we will go for a coincident and make these equal and that one's horizontal and hit build now instead of mirroring a sketch which can be um it's not the most robust way to mirror sketch geometry i prefer to get a sketch go insert surface extrude extrude a nominal amount doesn't really matter how much and then insert pattern mirror and mirror 
and kind of mirror it around the right plane and the body to mirror as that extrude. So we're not mirroring the feature or the face, we're mirroring the body. Okay, now we've got our four references. So we've got one, two using edges and two sketches. So if I go insert surface boundary, so insert surface boundary surface and we will pick go into selection manager and I'm going to pick these edges one two three four to make that into one selection and then I'm going to pick that circle and in the second direction we will pick one pick the surface edge pick the sketch pick the surface edge like that okay and then on the closed group which is the exterior uh, perimeter boundary going to go tangent to face next face like that and then ramp up the tangent influence okay so if i hide these bodies by hovering over them and pushing tab there's our resultant surface so what i can do because we base this on a solid so if i turn on my instant 3d again go up here and click on my plan control I can drag some dimensions around and those all update so that surface is updating um, it's referencing that solid geometry I find it a nice tidy way to control surfaces um, if the form is predominantly like a kind of rectilinear sort of form where the solid control makes more sense rather than building a whole lot of separate faces planar surfaces and knitting them all together it's much easier to uh, treat it as a hybrid model and scaffold off the solid. I'm going to jump over into the second example now, which um, is looking at scaffolding sort of more chamfers and crown surfaces off solids. Okay, so here's the second model. So turn my zebra stripes here. You can see the top here is crowned. Uh, this face here is crowned and i have this chamfer running down the side and that chamfer all lines up um, with my control geometry so i will delete these features like i did uh, for the uh, first example and then just roll through um, from the sc solid scaffold onwards and show you how i did this okay so here is my uh, scaffold my sort of starting point i've got a side elevation control which has the exterior boundary uh, and then I've got a few different offsets like this edge here is offset by eight because this one's offset by five and you see there that's just a solid extrude and that is offset by 10 millimeters off the end of this face and then that's 30 wide so again solid geometry easy to move around and kind of easy to block out um, some of your main forms rather than having to create uh, all these via surface extrudes so much quicker okay so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to crown these faces here and i'm going to treat this as an additive um, procedure so so this edge is going to stay where it is and the volume is going to increase slightly towards the middle so i'm going to go on this end face add a sketch and i'm going to add an arc and we want to make the end point of the arc coincident with the right plane and then the center point of the arc coincident with the right plane which means that's tangent across the middle and then all I have to do is add a dimension for how much crown I want so 1.5 millimeters and then I'm going to insert surface sweep and we'll pick that arc the profile and guide curve I'm going to use or path I'm going to use the edge of that boss extrude and I shouldn't have to change any of the profile twist uh, you can if you want you can if you depending on what result you want if you really want to make sure that's going straight along you just go specify direction vector and then pick the right hand plane and go okay and so if we hit our zebra stripes you can see there that top surface is now crowned okay so to integrate that into the solid i'm going to use the insert face replace so there's two options here first one 
is the target face to be replaced and then the second is the face that will do the replacing so we're going to pick that that extruded face on the top of the uh, extrude there and then I'm going to pick the sweep and push enter and that leaves your replacement face visible it doesn't uh, absorb it so to speak so you can use it for other features etc okay and now I'm going to crown the surface as well um, to crown it nicely you really want to have a rather than if I, if I sketch the arc on this bottom face here obviously it's going to be uh, at an angle to the sweep path so what I'm going to do is create a, a plane normal to the end of this or this edge here so again push S get your shortcuts plane and pick that edge and then I'm going to pick a point here so perpendicular to that edge at that point so sketch on there do the same again it's an arc Turn my planes on and endpoint is coincident to the right plane and then the center of the arc is again coincident to that right plane and then we just need to specify the crown distance so in this case maybe we'll make this one a bit a bit more crowny okay and insert surface sweep that's our section and our path again the edge there okay when using replace face it doesn't actually have to extend past uh, the target the surface that you're replacing so as you can see here if you're if you were extruding up to a surface your sketch your closed um, profile has to be fully contained within the, the boundary of the the surface that is terminating the extrude it's not the case for replace face because the surface can obviously be extended outwards um, if you've got some funky curvature around the the perimeter of these sorts of surfaces you might have some issues but this is a simple uh, swept arc surface okay so we're going to go insert surf, insert face replace pick the extrude pick the, the new surface and then hide okay so we've got we have got our crown surfaces Next thing we're going to do is um, add some fillets to these edges here. So again, S for shortcut, fillet. I'm going to pick that edge and I'll make it 20. And then a separate, separate dimension for this one. It's offset in. Okay. And last thing, we're going to create this chamfer surface along the outside here using the solid geometry edges so insert boundary surface sorry I use a shortcut normally so I get lost sometimes there we go surface boundary surface uh, I'm going to do this in one hit so I'm going to pick these three edges you right click and go selection manager and pick those three edges okay and selection manager again for the other three edges like that okay there's your boundary surface now one thing I, I tend to do, because I, I don't like having um, uh, these edges disappear, because quite often I might want to use this edge for something else. So what I normally do is on a boundary surface like this, which has got multiple entities, uh, making up each, each, um, each boundary curve is to turn off merge tangent faces. So that leaves me my edges there. Okay. So now we have our surface so to patch that into the solid geometry i basically need to make it a closed solid or a closed volume and then solidify it so to do that i need to create two planar surfaces to patch these little triangles up so i'm going to sketch here you can go insert surface planar and not make the sketch first but i i just find it to be a little bit more robust okay and then repeat the same thing on this end convert entities you can go straight into the um, the feature without having to exit the sketch okay now i'm going to 
hide by pushing tab when I'm hovering over these surfaces. Hide those and I need to copy these faces here to knit with the uh, other faces we just created with other surfaces to make that into a closed volume. So we'll go insert, surface offset and pick these and you notice here it says copy surface normally when you first time you open SOLIDWORKS and you insert an offset surface it will be on point 0.1 or whatever your default is and it will say offset surface but if you notice if you go to zero it's go to zero it changes to copy surface okay so now we've copied those surfaces so I'll just bring up the two planar faces and the boundary surface it's going to hide my solid and now we can go insert surface knit so again, we've got a shortcut, so we get a little lost. Two, three, and the end face. And I'm not going to create the solid within the knit. I'm going to create the solid within a separate feature. Show my solid. Insert, boss base, click in. Pick our closed surface, volume. Create solid from enclosed volume, and go OK. All right, so now we've got that as a solid. And last but not least, I'm just going to mirror this across. So mirror face, right, bodies to mirror, and merge solids. Okay, so if I turn my zebras on, you can see we've got, oh, I've got the SolidWorks glitch where it, um, the zebras, some of you might have seen this before, it's kind of like the spherical map that the zebras used to, um, project goes haywire so we shouldn't be seeing that it's like a pole anyway but now what you can do like if i turn instant 3d on um pick that fillet there and you can see there that's updated so my surface is updated um and everything like these edges are point to point you know like sometimes if you add a chamfer around after something after you've added some fillets um your geometry or your lines don't line up if that makes sense i can change the second one so the smaller one on the inside here to make that bigger smaller it definitely seems quite robust because we have we've got that basis of some fairly simple solid geometry that we're working off rather than a whole lot of surface features not that surface features aren't robust but this is just much probably a bit quicker and your tree doesn't end up quite as large what else can we do so the side elevation so we can play around with things using instant 3d um, and it just rebuilds on the fly other things you can do i'll turn the zebras on again see if it's fixed no it's not but uh this is a tangent fillet here so if we go into that fillet and edit it and we change it from circular to curvature continuous and then turn our zebras on again you can you can see here that that's now a curvature continuous um, fillet obviously this this surface here it starts off as curvature continuous here and that runs out to being tangent so to fix that you'd go into the second fillet and also make that curvature continuous and then turn our zebras on and that surface, as you can see, is now curvature continuous. Okay, so I'm um, going to wrap up there. So that's what I call sort of uh, surface modeling using solids as a scaffold or hybrid modeling sort of suits these sort of more geometric forms. Quite a robust way to control your surfaces. Uh, there's a little bit of double handling here. You have to knit things in or uh, thicken, thicken your surface geometry into the solid model to merge it but um overall seems quite robust so thanks for watching andrew jackson aj design studio bye